video is an update for our AM laboratory for ETE-335. It's primarily associated with the new Regal equipment, both the scope and the function generator or arbitrary waveform generator, and also we'll be using the new uh, Regal spectrum analyzer in the lab. So in AM systems, there's one key equation. The AM voltage, represented by E AM of T, E for generated voltage, is equal to E sub C, the carrier amplitude, plus the modulation amplitude and function waveform times the carrier. All of this forms the amplitude for the carrier. So we call it AM because the amplitude is being modulated. Now there are five key variables in that equation. The carrier voltage, the carrier frequency, the modulation voltage, and the modulation frequency. And we want to look at those in the time and frequency domains. There's a fifth variable associated with the modulation or AM shape, which in this case was sinusoidal represented by cosine 2 pi fm of t. Now when we mod create that AM signal in the time domain we expect to see this for that equation. The carrier is amplitude is modulated or changed by the modulation. So we're going to set this up on the arbitrary waveform generator and then monitor it on the spectrum analyzer. So the carrier frequency will be associated with the sine function. In this case we're going to set it to 100 kilohertz and 2 volts peak to peak for the amplitude. 100 kilohertz, 2 volts peak to peak. If we enable that we'll see a signal represented on the uh, scope. We won't measure it in terms of the values, but you could do that if you want it. Now on the bottom I have channel 2 connected to what is called the sync signal. Now the reason why we want to do this is that amplitude modulated waveforms with the amplitude changing so dramatically um, it is sometimes difficult for scopes to trigger. So we're going to use channel 2 and you could use the external trigger as um, the waveform the scope will reference on. Now the modulation is set up with the mod button. So when I press the mod button you're going to see um, the type and the your source can be internal or external. We're going to use internal. The AM frequency in this case we have it set to 10 kilohertz. The shape is sinusoidal you actually will later on use square triangle and then the uh, AM depth where this is the modulation index which is the ratio of the modulation voltage EM divided by E sub C. It can range from 0 to 100 percent. We're going to set this to be 100 uh, percent so we can look at that signal. Dial it up there and uh, we'll go up to 100 percent. It's showing a representation of that. On the scope what we see is if I adjust the time base I see the signal very similar to what we had here. The signal on paper was 50 percent so we can adjust to 50 percent also and there's a 50 percent modulated signal. Now uh, if we go turn our modulation back down to zero, you'll see that all we have is carrier. So with a modulation index of zero, we only have carrier. As we increase that E sub M term, then I get my modulation. The modulation frequency is associated with the envelope uh, of, the, of the waveform, both top and bottom. If I go to AM frequency, and I have it now set at uh, 20 kilohertz or 10 kilohertz if I change that frequency higher we see that the envelope changed by uh, double the frequency if I reduce it 
to uh, say 5 kilohertz, I see now that the waveform is stretched out. Modulation is related to this, the peak of the amplitude signals. The carrier is associated with the internal waveform. Again, I'll dial my percentage back to zero and we see the high frequency carrier. All right, that's how the signal looks in the time domain. So you'll get started with that, adjust it so you can become familiar with the values associated with the uh, time domain. In the frequency domain, we will connect the spectrum analyzer up using our BNCT. We're going to set the frequency of the span, the stop frequency to be uh, 500 kilohertz. That should be more than enough to see our 100 kilohertz signal. Uh, when we do this, we want to adjust the resolution bandwidth. We'll, we'll set it down to uh, 1 kilohertz on the resolution bandwidth. That's a good compromise. I'm going to change my frequency span a little bit more to be uh, 200 kilohertz so we can see our signal a little bit better. And we see our frequency signal in the middle. I'm going to change the uh, sinusoidal modulation frequency back to 10 kilohertz so we get a little better display. So now we have our carrier and our modulation at 10 kilohertz. Each one of these squares is one-tenth of 200 kilohertz or 20 kilohertz. So as we would expect, we see two squares or half a square to represent the upper sideband and lower sideband terms. Now, in order to kind of clean up the display, I'm going to change the amplitude to linear so we get a more classic looking kind of frequency display, something like this which is also in the handout, where we see the carrier term, the lower sideband term, and the upper sideband term. The carrier level is represented by the middle spike there. I'm going to adjust that um, level until it's at 100, the full screen. That'll make it a little easier for us to reference them. My modulation index will go back to that value under the modulation depth. It's at 60%. I'm going to increase that to 100%. So we see the 100%, meaning that the signal goes essentially to zero at those few points. And we see the two sidebands. Now you will notice that the sidebands are only 50% of the fundamental, which is always the case at a modulation index of 1, because although the carrier and, and modulation are the same level, the, in the modulation process, the modulation signal gets split into two for an upper sideband and lower sideband term. And this is why the value becomes E sub M over two. It's all in the math. And we looked at that in class. Now I'm going to change the modulation frequency again to be 20 kilohertz so we will spread out our sidebands. So there's our AM signal. I, I've changed the modulation frequency to 20 kilohertz. So I have my carrier at 100 kilohertz, my upper sideband at 100 plus 20 kilohertz, 120, and my lower sideband at 100 minus 20 kilohertz or 80 kilohertz. And of course the values are 50% because of the split between the upper and lower sidebands. So that is really all that AM is about. Take some measurements in spreadsheet, recording the screenshots to represent both the frequency and the time domain. All right, if we, uh, as you adjust that time domain depth, that one now you have to go back down to zero, you will uh, notice that, of course, with zero modulation, we have no, um, amplitude modulation or change and of course on the spectrum analyzer we only have the carrier at its 100 percent value no matter the modulation index we always have a carrier and a um, carrier amplitude for am that is one of the drawbacks of am in terms of efficiency is that we no matter the uh, index we will have um,
we, we will always have a carrier. So that's AM sinusoidal modulation. Now, after you have worked on that, you will change the AM shape. We can change the shape of modulation. In this case, we can change to square wave, and you will see a very different looking signal. I'm going to uh, reduce my modulation frequency to something more like um, 5 kilohertz, so we'll get a little bit better display. And there we can see the nice square wave modulation in the envelope of the AM signal. If I go back to the shape of sine wave, I see that. And the square wave is this. And of course, if we go to triangle wave, we'll see that, which is the triangle wave represented in the envelope. Square sign and we are we can understand the um, implications of changing the modulation shape now if I go to triangle wave and then look on the spectrum analyzer you will notice that I will see a few extra signals in here I'm going to increase the modulation index to 100 percent here so we can get the maximum on the uh, modulation signals so again we see the signal going to zero at those points where the carrier and the modulation cancel each other. And this is our, our frequency domain. Again, the carrier in the middle, the two sidebands representing the uh, first upper and lower sideband. And then we see components here. These are components related to the triangle wave. If I go to logarithmic mode, you'll see them quite uh, dominantly the, that's the first harmonic of the sideband, which becomes the first um, upper sideband. We have third upper sideband, and also we have lower sidebands. So every harmonic in the time domain becomes a, um, a sideband in the frequency domain. We'll switch back to sine wave so we can show that in the sine wave modulation, we only have the carrier and the two upper and lower sidebands. But when we switch to triangle wave, we're going to get a, uh, we see the sidebands appear. And of course, if we switch to square wave shape, we're going to get many more sidebands because there were more harmonics in the square wave. So that is really AM modulation in a very short manner. So read over the laboratory. Ask questions if you have them. We'll see you next week.